Windows 98 finally worked. So how do we go from that to Windows ME? In the year 2000, Microsoft released Windows Millennium Edition, Windows ME. And for a lot of people, this was the moment Windows stopped feeling dependable and started feeling like a gamble. Some people remember Windows ME as a minor upgrade, a quick bridge release, something you barely noticed. But for everyone who lived through it, Windows ME has a very different reputation. It was buggy. It was unstable and it quickly became one of the most skipped versions of Windows in history. Windows ME was designed as a home user operating system. It was part of the consumer Windows line, the same family as Windows 95 and Windows 98. But Microsoft was also moving in a totally different direction behind the scenes with Windows N which was built for stability, security, and business environments. So by the late 90s, Microsoft had two separate worlds, a consumer line built on top of DOS and a professional line built on NT. Windows ME was released during this awkward transition period. It was basically Microsoft trying to squeeze one more consumer Windows release out of the old DOS-based architecture, while the future was clearly heading somewhere else. On paper, Windows ME had some interesting goals. It pushed multimedia harder. It focused on home users. It introduced system restore. It tried to improve boot time. It came with updated bundled applications. But the reality was messy. Driver support was a nightmare. Hardware was changing fast in 2000. New sound cards, new graphics cards, new peripherals, new chipsets. And Windows ME had a reputation for breaking things that worked fine in Windows 98. Install one bad driver and the entire system could become unstable. Random freezes, unexpected reboots, weird errors that were almost impossible for normal users to troubleshoot. And then there was one decision that made a lot of power users furious. Windows ME removed real mode DOS. That mattered because DOS wasn't just a legacy thing, it was a safety net. In Windows 95 and Windows 98, you could drop into real DOS for compatibility, troubleshooting, and running older software. With Windows ME, Microsoft tried to block that. The idea was to improve stability and reduce the ways users could break the system. But the result was the opposite. Compatibility suffered. Troubleshooting got harder. And the people who actually knew how to fix their own systems felt like Microsoft took away their toolbox. Windows ME also had a reputation for crashing more than Windows 98. Some of that came down to how it handled drivers and system files. Some of it was the fact that it felt rushed. And some of it was simply the reality of consumer windows still being tied to old foundations that were reaching their limit. By this point, the DOS-based Windows era was running out of road. Windows ME wasn't the start of something new. It was the last stretch of something old. And that's why so many users skipped it. If you were on Windows 98 and your system was stable, a lot of people saw no reason to upgrade. And if you bought a new PC with Windows ME and had a terrible experience, you were desperate for the next thing because everyone knew what was coming. Windows XP. And Windows XP wasn't just an upgrade, it was a rescue mission. 
Windows ME is remembered the way it is for a reason. It wasn't just bad luck or internet exaggeration. It was released at the wrong time, on the wrong foundation, with the wrong balance of ambition and stability. It was the end of an era, and it showed. If you're enjoying this Windows Through the Ages series, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment. And if you want to actually experience Windows ME, Windows 98, Windows 95, and dozens of other operating systems without touching your main PC, check out the Ultimate USBs at bootableusbs.com. Next up, Windows XP. The redemption arc begins.